Welcome to the Word Podcast. The Lord God has given us His Word. Let us learn it. Let us live it. Let us rejoice in it. Spread the Word. Blessings, everybody. This is Dale. Thank you so much for joining with me on the Word Podcast. Um, again, I encourage you to uh, pass the word about this time together. As a matter of fact, I'm going to have some things coming up in the next few episodes, I think, probably about four or five episodes down the road, uh, related uh, to the podcast and how you might be able to help and do some things with it, okay? Uh, we're actually very rapidly uh, creeping up on a year's worth of episodes. This is uh, episode number 361. And we've done one a, one a day, and so we're right there at the year mark. So anyway, pass the word. And just let folks know what it is. You know, I, my whole idea behind this is to uh, spend in less than 10 minutes a day, uh, sometimes even less than that, just uh, the opportunity to listen to the Word of God and to hear the Word of God and just think a little bit about what it may be saying. Of late, we have been in the book of Second Peter, and we're drawing to the end of that. Uh, Second Peter uh, is an interesting book, and Peter tells us some more about it in the third chapter, which is where we are. And it's a short book. It's only three chapters long. And Peter tells us this in the first verse of chapter 3. He says, This is now, beloved, the second letter I'm writing to you, in which I am stirring up your sincere mind by way of reminder. And so we actually find out why he's writing. We find out that he's written before. Well, that's the one we have is First Peter. And a lot of times these folks would have written uh, a lot of letters Paul wrote more letters than what we have within the Scripture. And, and sometimes people will, you know, innocently and sincerely, they'll say, well, why aren't they all in there? Well, there's only the ones that the Lord wanted in there, okay? Those are the ones that he determined were his word and what he desired and the way that he moved upon the men of old, and the Scripture describes it to us, are the ones that he leaves within his Scripture. Now, there's other letters, there's other sources, and there's other things that uh, give us tremendous insight into things that are helpful, uh, Jewish writings and things like that, historical writings. Okay, that's all fine. But they're not what we call canonical. They're not considered to be the Word of God, the Bible. But these two are, First Peter and what we call First Peter and Second Peter. So he's saying, this is the second letter that I've written to you. And then you find out the purpose, the reason that he's writing is to stir up their mind. But he was very encouraging with them. He said, stir up your sincere mind. Okay, your sincere mind. He's saying, I know that you sincerely want to live this life. I know even the corrective things that he's brought. He knew that their mind was sincere toward the Lord. And he said, your sincere mind by way of reminder. Hmm. So that tells us that they know these things. They knew these things. It's always good to be reminded what you know. It's especially good to be reminded of the things that we used to know and we forgot. <laughs> we go, man, that's right. I knew that. I should be living this way. I should have been doing this this way and this way. So he says, this is the reason that I'm writing to you. Now, watch what he says. Again, verse 1. This is now, beloved, the second letter I'm writing to you, in which I am stirring up your sincere mind by way of reminder. Verse 2 that you should remember the words spoken beforehand by the holy prophets and the commandment of the Lord and Savior spoken by your apostles. Now, in the New American Standard, uh, that's one sentence, okay? In the ESV, the sentence continues on. But the idea is this. He says, I'm stirring your mind, your sincere mind, and I'm reminding you. Okay, well, what's he reminding him about? Then he tells us, point blank, you're to remember the words. Okay, remember what words? The words spoken beforehand by the prophets and the commandment of the Lord and Savior by your apostles. And so that's what we would call today the Old Testament and the New Testament. As a matter of fact, I was just speaking with a gentleman a while ago at the bank. Okay, just went to the bank a while ago. And the, uh, the cashier there is just a great, great godly guy. I was actually sharing a goal and desire of his life uh, to be able to study a particular kind of way uh, the Old Testament. And he was telling me, because he, he's like me, he was raised and still goes to a little country church. And he says, you know, a lot of times my friends are sitting there saying, well, we don't need the Old Testament. We don't need this kind of stuff. We've got the New Testament. We're a new covenant, so we don't need the Old. And, you know, I just have to be real careful that I don't get smart mouth and snarky with that, you know, because usually when people say that, it is sincere. I know what they mean. They've been taught that their whole lives, but nothing could be further from the truth. 
And Peter is writing and telling them, he's writing and telling us, the Lord knew we would knew, that we would need this, that we should remember the words spoken before him by the holy prophets. And in that, he's referring to the Old Testament. Okay, You have the Old Testament as the law, it's the writings, it's the poetic thing, and it's the prophets. And we are to know that. And for the most part, we're very, very, very weak in that. You really can't understand all the glory and all that the Lord has revealed to us in the New Testament unless you know what's being said in the Old Testament. We're experiencing that locally right now. At, the, at this time, we're studying the book of Jude, okay? a little short book. At toward, right at the end of the New Testament, right before Revelation. You'll be amazed at how many people don't even know there is a book of Jude. Because it's 25 verses. If your pages stick together, you, you flip right through it, you know, right over it. Uh, but if you don't know the Old Testament, you're going to have no idea what the examples are that are being given there. Because in one verse, Jude will give uh, three examples and you go back and look in the Old Testament and find out these things are extended stories, like three and four chapters long sometime. what occurred right here, that we must know that. We must know it historically. But then also, we must know the Old Testament to truly know who the Most High God is. You're going to have an incomplete understanding of who God is if you don't know all that He's revealed about Himself. Now, I know what people say, well, all I need to know about God is revealed in the Lord Jesus Christ. I understand. And under salvation, yes, I totally understand. But when you see what the Lord did over the millennia in the Old Testament, the marvelous and wondrous ways that he worked, the typologies, the foreshadowings, the principles, the truths that are there, it is absolutely amazing. And I've run into a couple of people that get absolutely sort of combative about this kind of thing. You know, they don't think we have anything to do with the Old Testament. And I'll go, I'll go great, great. So we just won't have to worry about that Ten Commandment thing, right? Well, that shuts them up. And I said the Ten Commandments is simply a synopsis of the law. And, you, and I thought you said we don't need it because we're not under the law anymore. We're not under the law. But the law is fulfilled in and through the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want to know what has occurred here. And I want to know what's happened. So that's what Peter says. You need to remember these words. To remember them means that they knew them. To know them means they learned them, folks. So he's saying that you should remember the words spoken beforehand by the holy prophets. And then the second one, and the commandment of the Lord and Savior by your apostles. The apostles were the ones that were bringing forth the truth that Jesus had given them. And so he's saying this, you need to know the Old Testament. You need to know the New Testament. You need to know the totality of the Word of God. Not only the totality of the Word of God, but what you see within balance of the Scripture, you need to be to know and not to quench and be known by the Spirit, you need to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. You don't want to become a biblical deist. We don't worship the Bible. We worship the Most High God whose Word is the Bible. But we also know that the Holy Spirit guides us and directs us. Okay, And so anyway, he's reminding them that you need to know this. Now, he's talking about something particular. How do I know that? <laughs> well, because of the next verse. But we don't have time for that. So we'll pick that up the next time. Okay? Again, I'm Dale. I'll see you then. Goodbye.